Hey class, welcome back. Mr. G here. Today, we're going over another great classroom management technique, the phone call. Hey class, welcome back. Mr. G, again, the phone call is the topic of discussion for today. So again, it's one of those talking head videos. So put it on, do something else. Just listen to what I'm saying and, uh, and definitely put something down in the comments, but we're explaining what the importance is of doing phone calls still. Now in the age of digital, this is kind of a weird, do we still need to do that? Doesn't, isn't email sufficient? No. Uh, and the reason being is because I, I had a meeting this past week and that's where this topic came from where I teach new teachers. Uh, I'm, we have a thing in my district where we have a meeting once a month where new teachers that are, that are new to the district come in and it's all virtual. And veteran teachers, we talk about what works and what doesn't work and what we've learned over the years of experience that we've gotten. And this is just one of those things where I think this is an important thing for us all to know from fresh out of college to multi-year veterans. So I think that this is an important thing. So the phone call is a classic tool that we use for parental engagement, to get messages out home, discipline, and just a myriad of different things. And what I did during, um, when we were under the first virtual setup, uh, I had a, during my Wednesdays, I, I blocked out an hour's worth of time and I called all my parents and I left voicemails or touch base with them and it became just a routine thing. So I had five or six parents who knew the time that when the phone rang, it was me. And all I was doing was just, hey, this is what's currently going on. I'm just reaching out to see if anybody's got questions. If you guys are good, I'm good and we're moving on. Phone call took about a minute but the contact was made and that's what was important is that there is some sort of communication between the teacher and the parent so that everybody's on the same page and we were during that time it was really prevalent for my for the admin and district leaders and everything to have that parental engagement so it was really they they drilled it into us that that's what needed to be done and in retrospect, I think that's a good thing, but it's not much different than what I was doing already. Uh, I do do a lot of parent contact in general. And the reason being is because it makes your life easier. Uh, case in point, so I've been teaching for over a decade and it hurts when I say that because it's a long amount of time. Anyway, so one of the things that just made my life a lot easier, this was a, a middle school thing. I, because teaching art, I teach I, ta I teach the whole school. Every student in that school comes through my room at least once during that time frame. But I had a reputation, and which was this. During those first two weeks of classes, I sit on the phone every day and I make a few phone calls every single day. So take my planning, try and just carve out 30 minutes. 30 minutes is all that I'm, I'm kind of asking for, and that's either 15 minutes at the end of the day, 15 minutes during the planning period, or if you have a morning time where you get in just a few minutes early, make those phone calls then. It makes discipline almost non-existent because you don't have to do anything because you've you've laid the groundwork out of this is what's going on. One of those things that I do during that time frame is this, is you know who are your kids who give you um, extra wrinkles uh, th those those kids that you have issues with getting started on day one and making phone calls and just like i call the parent i had we had one parent who let's let's talk about this one parent first let's call him badger uh nobody build in the building at all wanted to work with this father because well we had a lot of gang affiliation and they, they were scared of him, honestly. I wasn't because it's just a guy. That's it. At, at the end of the day, this, the, all parents are people. So I had that. I had conversations with the man on several occasions. Had conversations with grandparents, uh, aunts, uncles, everybody. I, I talked to anybody. I started day one like, hey, this is who I am. This is what I do. This is what I expect. Flat out, just black and white, keeping it as, as clear as possible. Man respected me all four years that his kid was in middle school. We had a great relationship. So I would usually have to be called, like the principal would call me, come down and like, hey, can you help out with this with this parent? And I'm like, okay, cool. Cause I had that reputation. I spent those two weeks in the beginning, I'd call parents and just say, hey, this is who I am. This is what I'm doing. I'm not, I don't want to take too much of your time. Open up those lines of communication. Cause you know, we want to make those kids successful. The key to these phone calls is this, you're putting out keywords, trigger words that you want to 
invigorate parents to like, oh, my kid is in a safe space, a safe environment, and the kid's going to do well. I need to make sure that I work with this person because that is what's important. You want to make sure that everybody's on the same page and we're all working together because that's what we're doing. We're trying to make the kid the best version they possibly can be, and that takes communication. Just let's start off with a, with a quick phone call of, of how I interact with this. I'm using my paint kit as my prop. Hi, can I speak to Mrs. Smith? Yes, may I ask who's calling? Miss, this is Mr. G Dover at the school and just wanted to touch base with you, just see how everything's going. Uh, I've got Aiden in my class. How's he, how are they doing in their other classes? Off the, off the bat, I've asked about the other classes, not my class, because I want to know the full picture. Has this parent received several phone calls before? Have they received no call, phone calls before? Have they never heard from the school at all? Which, these are possibilities. Starting off by asking that, that gives me two things. One, information. Two, time. That time gets me to go into, uh, we use um, Infinite Campus. Most, a lot of people, I think in the state of Georgia use that one. And uh, it gives me a minute to pull up the kid, pull up the parent, pull up uh, where I can type in my notes. That's the reason why I do it. But it also throws the parent off of their game because that gives me, that it's like, oh, this, the teacher's not just going off on my kid. This teacher's not telling me just something's going on. Now they want to work with me. I've opened that door already. Oh, they they um, uh, they're doing they're doing fine in in this class, but you know uh, they got some trouble in math class. Oh, okay, I understand that. So how how you doing? What, what's going on? Again, I've thrown them off their game. Not necessarily a bad thing because that's the thing we want to make an even playing field. We want nothing, no animosity like, oh, my kid does this. No, no, we're, we're cutting that off early. Yeah, I'm just touching base with you. Just wanted to let you know that, you know, we're, we got these projects coming in and they're and they're not getting them, you know, done fast enough. I'm, I'm trying to get more stuff out of them because, you know, we got such a short amount of time. I want to make sure that we're all, we're all as, as beneficial as possible. Again, trying to lay positivity first, always positivity. Let's go into discipline now. But I did want to touch base with you. We had an incident today where Aiden didn't want to follow directions and he, he wanted to try to maybe just wanted to show off to his friends. I don't know. But it seemed that he just wanted to have have some problems today. And, you know, I don't want to do detention. I really don't. But it is one of those things where he's he's done something in front of in front of me, in front of the class, and, it, and it's causing a disruption. And I'd hate to give him detention. Can you talk to him and try and, and try to make sure that that doesn't happen again, so that we don't have to you know do detention or or do something else like that? You know, because we're we're just trying to you know have a decent class, have a good class, make sure everybody gets gets a good grade this term and get out in, in a good manner. I'm setting up that groundwork like. I am giving you a very, very clear warning. If this doesn't change, this will be detention. But at the same time, I'm doing it in a very positive manner. It's that sleight of hand kind of thing. Keep in mind that you're talking to a parent and the parent doesn't want to hear that their kid's being bad all the time. Some parents know that their kid is just bad all the time. We we have that, that have that, but you want to reassure the parent that, you know, it's not my decision. I'm not coming after your kid they're doing something and I don't want them to, and I want them to do what they possibly, what they should be doing. And I don't want them to force my hand. Again, I'm keeping that even keel, that positivity. I'm trying to keep it, keep hammering at home. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'll talk to him this afternoon. Don't worry. You won't, you won't have any problems left him and, and, and we'll take care of that. 10 times, nine out of 10 times. I usually call after the class, meaning that the kids already come through me. I didn't really want to do it at the same time that I, uh, do, don't do it before you've had that kid. So this is something that happened the day before because it happened the day before. The parent doesn't want to hear what happened yesterday. They want to hear what happened today. So you kind of got to be on the ball of keeping it current. If you're not current, parent doesn't care as much. That's option A. Then we get into the second phase where they've done something again. Now I got to do detention. Hey, Mrs. Smith, I just want to touch base. We, we had that issue again. I got to do detention. I'm sorry. It's It's just... You know how it is. If you, you do it once, we tried. Uh, so here's the detention. Now my detentions, because of this, because of our schedule and the way that we have after school and everything, I do my detentions in the morning. So the kid needs to be here about eight o'clock, uh, which is 30 minutes before the doors open. So just uh, just get letting you know they're coming home with the detention slip. I'll expect them to see them at this time. You know, I, I, I hope that you have a better day. And and uh, and you know, again, if you have questions. 
feel free to contact me, keep, keep me posted on activities. All my detentions always were morning detentions. I'm not staying after school because if I stay after school, I gotta wait to, if a parent is late getting off of work or late coming from something, I gotta wait for them to come pick up the kid. So if I did in the mornings, parents also slightly inconvenienced because now they have to get up earlier. They have to make sure the kid comes in or that goes into, um, it depends on your situation, how your stuff's laid out. But I did my stuff early in the morning just for that reason, to make sure that I'm not waiting longer and inconveniencing my time for something that I didn't cause. I'm trying to keep everybody on the same page. In, in my syllabus, is all detentions are served in the morning before school, and it I don't make it exceedingly um, different time frames. So like uh, if classes, the building, op the classes started at 8.30, 8 o'clock was the time that I'd have detention. Only one time did I have, I scheduled a detention for 7 a.m. Classes didn't even start until 8.30. Uh, reason being is because this kid was just, he did it all the time. He did stuff all the time to, to get detention. And it wasn't just me, this was across the board. And trying to do little things to like, to reach out to, to get the parent to understand like, we're all collectively having problems. It's not us. Uh, getting back to the, to the point at hand there, the phone calls, the phone calls, the communication. I am talking to a parent about their child. I do not want to come down on a parent who's a bad parent or come down on a kid who's having a bad day. Sometimes kids, the kid's a fine kid. The kid just had a mistake. Or sometimes the kid seems like they're, they're starting to go down the wrong path and you want to just steer them back on the right path. Getting that parent involved and just, again, keeping up that line of communication, keeping it friendly, keeping it open, keeping it clear, black and white, makes life easier. Get out there, take care, take care of some phone calls, reach out to parents. Also, uh, never use your own cell phone number, set up a Google number, and uh, so it's all derived through that, and that's legal purposes, that's not necessarily, and also, I don't like parents to have my personal phone number. Sorry, no. Even, um, even friends of mine that I work with, I will give them the Google number sometimes because they call me all the time. It's easier to have that go to voicemail. Just remember, get out there early, make those phone calls, make those connections, build those bridges, don't tear things down, and you're gonna have a much better school year overall. And once you start doing that repetitively often, it cuts out that this person's gonna call. Also, uh, just jumping back a second, that kid who made a mistake, called the parent, had that little discussion, next day, because I usually do bus duty, see the kid out on the bus lane, Hey, Aiden. Mom was m mom was real nice on the phone. Hope that hope that you guys had a had a good evening last night. Everything was well. I can't wait to see you in class. Positivity. We talked to we talked. Mom and I had a conversation. I hope that you have a good day. I want to see you in class. I want to see you be your best. Again, build the culture you want. Don't expect the culture just to happen. You got to have a you got to have a firm hand in making that culture happen for you and making that classroom work the way that you want it to work. All right, let's go ahead and wrap up class like we always do. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share all the various platforms. Get the message out there to as many teachers, friends, students as possible can, trying to educate the message. Masses, get us all on the same page. Make us all better people. That is the goal. If you guys had a question, comment, or concern to during today's class, raise your hands in the comments below. Happy to answer those questions from my classmates. I am working on the Banksy footage now. I'm, I, I, I got a Banksy field trip piece coming up. It's three videos. I am dying to get it out. It is pulling teeth for me to get this footage edited, so I'm hoping that it comes out well. So stay tuned for that. Um, other than that, I will see you guys next class. So until then, later, guys.